guys, it's Reenactment Day here with another World War One video, as you can see. Now, most of this is just going to be the standard, me going over it again. <clears throat> but some, but a little bit of it, a couple things, are different. So, that's why I'm just making this quick video. And you know what I say, you know what I always say when I say quick video. It ends up being like a long video. So, we'll see how this video goes. Alright, starting off, we got the... Standard Mall 1917 pants, Mall 1916 cotton shirt. I'm trying to find a Mall 1917 wool shirt. No luck on that, everybody's out of stock. Man the line, out of stock, and also heard some things about them. Uh, I checked their eBay store, they have them, but out of stock. And what well, price glory doesn't make them, so I don't know where to, where to look. <laughs> Alright, so next we got the Mall 1917 tunic to go over this. I'll just button this top button, because... The wool collar is itchy. What I've seen some U.S. troops do... Mind if I can get that on? Alright. What I've seen some U.S. troops do is take the collar and pop it up over this brim. In combat, really. For dress occasions they wouldn't, but... They'd pop it up over the, uh... Collar. And, you know, not to just stop it from... Riding it on their neck and hurting, because... You know, they had the same issue with this wool. The Mall 1917 wool is very itchy. Very itchy kind of wool. Alrighty, so we got all that all set up. Footwear, I'm just gonna bring it up here because you've seen it before. Mall 1917 uh, trench boot. Got the hobnails on there. And wrapped, again, with putties. Alrighty, now that that's done, we can start moving on to field gear. And of course, we'll start off with the gas mask bag. Well, uh, corrected English model gas mask, I'm pretty sure it was technically designated in 1917 as well. Gas mask bag, you actually, um, so how you wear this thing is not like this, it is like this to keep the opening in towards you. So if you dive in the dirt, no dirt's gonna get in the gas mask right here. And it also has a very nice little clip that you can hook on. Right there, like that, and what that does is it brings it up closer to your chest. Now, I probably shouldn't have put it on quite yet, because I need to get this thing untied before I can do anything. Luckily, that knot was quite easy to undo. Sometimes they can be a bit difficult. Alrighty. So what you're going to do with this long piece of cord, if you've never seen this video before, what you're going to do is take this, flip it over, and just take it. What I do is I have it on the outside of it. I don't have it going like I cross them and over. I have it on the outside so it kind of spreads the bag out and makes it easier to put the gas mask back in the bag. Sometimes this rope can be long enough where... Hold on. Long enough where you can actually go back around and then just I take it here and tie it off. Right here. Again, can be quite annoying to do, but you know, it's how they did it a hundred and something years ago, so ain't gonna be easy, really. It's just if it works. Alrighty. Now that we have the gas mask on, the gas mask is in there as well. We can go to the field gear. So I got my early Mall 1910 P green haversack. This could also be this color haversack. This tan and this P green color. P green was early war. Tan was like during the war. Well, not even during the war. They switched it pretty quickly. P green. And the cartridge belt is an actual standard Mall 1910 cartridge belt. I'll show you one once I get it on. Alright. Now that it's on, standard Mall 1910 cartridge belt. This is an original from 1918 in very nice condition. And you can see it has all the pouches on it. And they have the little ripples at the bottom. I always forget what they're called. Little ripples at the bottom. And this could fit all of your ammo that you would carry. You could also have bayonet leaves. Uh, what's different from the one that I have right now is the other one is a Mall 1917, which is a simplified version, and it has one pocket removed for a pistol patch. 
This would be the standard issue for troops, right here. This amount of troops. Uh, early War P. Green, Mall 1910. Uh, medical pouch, along with early Eagle Snap canteen cover. I would have gotten a uh, Eagle Snap cartridge belt, but they are very expensive, very hard to find. And uh, repros are also pretty expensive. So I, pr I bought this cartridge belt for cheaper than a repro. So that is why I got this one. Might as well get an original if I am to get anything. Alrighty, one of the pieces of hatware that you can carry, right here, is the good old fashioned, stand, iconic American campaign hat. With the blue cord insignia, like insignia, it shows, it, it shows that you're infantry. That's what I'm getting at. So, you got the brim, very nice hat. It's usually common, it's usually related with the modern drill, structure, drill instructors, but their caps are a bit darker of a brown than this. They're a bit shorter, and, no, oh, uh, that's about it, really. Oh, they also don't have five rows of stitching right here. But, this is the World War One cap. So, you can see a lot of the time the cap's folded back like this. I actually gotta get a hat press for this. Or, get, make one. This two pieces of plywood with a hole drilled in the middle for the hat. So, I just gotta make one. Gotta get plywood. So, this is one of the hats you can wear. Another one of the hats you can wear, or I should say helmets, is the Brody helmet. You can see I have this one painted with the 104th torch, that's when I'm doing my impression. I'm actually thinking about getting into the Great War Association. Sadly they do not have the 26th as a uh, group option. Pretty sure there is a World War I group, but I'm not sure if they do many reenactments. I'd have to look into them. But so far I'm doing the 26th, 104th. Same thing as my World War II. They existed in World War I as well, and they were pretty famous in World War I as well. So, we got the, this is about the standard combat load of the Doughboy. I'm actually going to go get another hat right now. I will be right back. Alrighty, just to cover the last piece of headwear that you could have is the overseas cap. They had this as a dress cap because it is a lot easier to have and transport than the other cap, the forgetting the name, campaign hat. You see, easy, stands about the same. It's a bit different, it's quite a bit different than the World War II version. Uh, I'm pretty sure this one's a bit small on me because what price glory sizes are a bit weird. But standard wool made out of the same kind of itchy wool and has just the standard fabric liner in there. So you can just fold it, bring it for transportation. Alrighty, going back to the helmet. Here we are. I'm gonna repaint this, make it the better, correct color. All right, just to cover some things that are on the haversack, we got the Model 1910 T handle shovel and the Model 1905 bayonet. That's about it. You could also have the P17 bayonet if you were issued a P17. You could have the uh, the Model 1910 T hand, the Model 1910 Pickmatic, or the Model 1910 Hatchet. The Model 1910 T handle shovel was the most common. Uh, tool that was issued. Now time to cover the last piece of kit, and for any reenactor, the most expensive piece of kit, the rifle. As you can see, this ain't one of my fake rifles that I always use in my videos. I'm just starting to show these in my content. So, we got a Mall 1903 Springfield. As you can see, very nice. Got a finger groove stock, milled parts. I'll cover the differences in a, between an A3 in a moment. But, some features of the O3 is the ladder sight. Now, the ladder sight is a bit of a different sight for even World War One. Uh, most sights were the ladder sight, or not the leaf sights, not the ladder sights. The world, uh, the U.S. experimented with leaf sights, mostly on the Krag Jorgensen, but uh, America decided to end to adopt the ladder sight. One main reason for this is that we were going to issue these rifles to, to cavalry. And, you know, the cavalry has a holster that you put your rifle in. Now, one problem with a leaf sight, if the leaf sight is, you know, elevated at all, uh, is when you go into the, uh, go into the, uh, scabbard, 
it, the site can catch, not make the wrapper go in all the way, or if it did, does go on the way, it can catch and not come out. Now with a ladder site, if you put it in the scabbard and this light is or this sight is up, it'll fold back. And the other way, it'll fold forward. So that's one little nice feature of this. And now just talking more about the leaf sight. There are like there are four different sights that I found on this site. We got a little aperture sight right there, a little triangular sight, a uh, volley sight right up here, and a little groove sight right there for just shooting like this. Shooting like that. Now, let me think. Um, this, okay, yeah, this sight is ranged out to 2,000 yards. Well, it can go out, out that far. They didn't expect it to hit anything that far, but you can go out that far. And it's just, uh, they're just being very nice with that sight. And they're just probably like, no, eh, there's more room on it. Might as well put the range. So, the O3 is a strip of clip fed, five rounds. Now you can see, snap caps, all fake rounds. So, and a, and a nice brass stripper clip too. So we can just feed that in there, feed that in like that, and put it back. Well, the clip is made, so in, when it's in the guide, you can slam the bolt forward, and the clip will go flying. But because it's an original clip, I don't want to do that. And not to mention, this is an original clip with both of the tabs on it. So, don't want to damage that one. So that's the O3. And as you can see, the ejector is pretty powerful compared to the Lee Enfield, which I found that extractor kind of weak. This one can just throw that across the room. I'll probably have to find that later. <laughs> so we got the Mon 1903 Springfield. Now some differences between the 03A3 and the 03. The big difference is the rear sight. Rear sight is a ladder sight on this one, but on the A3, it would be a little aperture sight right here. The front, the front stock would also extend back here, and you know it would extend back there and uh, just cover the whole barrel. Now there's a few different models of the O3. If you want to go through all of them, there's the O3, there's a standard O3. Actually, you know I'll you know I'll count it as a different model. The O3 with the rod bayonet, the standard O3, the O3 Mark One, the O3A1, the O3. I'm not. I think the O3A2 was a sniper rifle. I'm not finding too much information about that one. The O3A3, as you can, as I just described, is the World War II variant, and the O3A4 is definitely a sniper rifle. Now, the O3 Mark I was issued very late war, was starting to seen, starting to be seen, and any O3s that came back were gonna be switched. Pretty much the main difference was there were holes cut right here for an ejector. Now you might wonder, well, why does there need to be an extra ejector right there because we were developing the Pedersen device and you know I'm not gonna I'm, I'm never gonna have one to show you because they go for like forty thousand dollars and but pretty much you would take out the bolt you just gotta hold the bolts up like that then you take that out you would put the Pedersen device in magazine cut up on and then it would change it to I think it was like a 32 caliber 32 caliber pistol round, but it would be semi-auto. Now, main reason why we didn't really issue that is because, well, number one, the war end. Number two, the, it wasn't that reliable. So, and so that's pretty much going to be covering this. A uh, few more features, I'll just say. Um, compared to the O3A3, milled parts, milled front band, milled middle band, milled trigger guard and milled butt plate which I just prefer to look of milled parts yeah, I love that little line in there you actually saw that line on gas trap grants when they were being made so very nice now a feature so okay so unloading an 03 you would have to do that a bunch now hold on, let me just grab one of these let me just grab one of these and with the 03s Okay, with the O3A3, you would just need to cycle it a bunch. But the O3 and the the O3, the O3A3, and the O3 Mark One, you can just push down a little button. That's the size of a 30 out six casing. Sometimes it can be a little tr 30 out six bolt, but sometimes it can be a little tricky to get that button down. There we are. 
and you just the entire bottom of the magazine slides out, and all the rounds fall out the bottom. Then you can just hook it back in place. You just gotta like slide it around a bunch. You'll hear a click and it'll go back. And sometimes this thing can be a little finicky, but during the like three other shoots I've done with this, it just went right in. So, just give me one moment. I'll get that in, just give me a moment. <laughs> Alright, now that we got that back in, that was a feat to do. A little uh, accessory, you can call it, of the O3 is the Mo 1905 bayonet. If I just pull up the haversack, I can press the button, unsheath the bayonet, and affix it to the rifle. There we go. Fix it to the rifle. Now this bayonet has a little trouble going onto the rifle. I do not know why, uh, if I change the handles on this to the plastic ones, or if I sand the handles down, don't worry, they're not original handles, it will fit on the M1, but my O3 is having a problem with the bayonet. So, there's that. And you can see quite a lengthy rifle. I'm about, stand about six foot, so it's about five foot, maybe a little tall. Very long, very dangerous object, hence why we don't use them in reenactments. And, but it does look very cool. Very long. And like I said, the main reason for long bayonets isn't so when you're down in a trench you can go up and get someone. It's for cavalry. Um, when a cal you know, cavalry is that men are up on horses, you don't really want to kill the horse because you can use them, but you know, if you have to kill the horse, kill the horse. But the bayonets are so long so you can actually reach the rider on top of the horse, even if you're down like this in a position, you can reach all the way up there to the horse ride, or you know, to the rider. That's why bayonets were long, and you saw them getting short down because they're like cavalry ain't around no more. <laughs> Modern cavalry is a tank, and that isn't that helpful against tanks. So, we got the Mall 1905 bayonet on the Mall 1903 Springfield. Now, the reason why the it's called the Mall 1905 bayonet and the Mall 1903 Springfield, what was in between? Well, the 03 had a rod bayonet. Then they, uh, I'm pretty sure they showed it to Teddy Roosevelt, I think it was Teddy Roosevelt, and he said, what is this? I don't know, you're just going to a rod, uh, blade bayonet. So they switched it to a blade bayonet, because he said, this, this thing's wimpy. It's gonna bend, it's not, it, it, no. <laughs> so we'll lean this in the corner, and I'll show you some parts in here. Well, I'll show you the gas mask. And here it is. See, it's connected to a tube that goes down to the filter, and the piece is, an, is like a snorkel mouthpiece, so it's hard to talk in this thing. In World War II, they had the, uh, well, they had a gas mask, and they had, actually had a little piece of foil here, and it was sealed to the face so you didn't need the mouthpiece, but a little piece of foil here, so when you talk, the foil would vibrate with your voice, and you can hear what somebody's talking, or, you know, what they're saying, mostly. Well, now let me throw this thing on. Oh, 
I'm gonna clean. So very hard to talk, you know. I was kind of doing some hand signals there. You could probably see what I meant by that. So I'm not gonna describe it. I'll let you guys have fun trying to figure out what I've said. And put that back in there. You know, I'll just leave this dangling. And I will take off the bayonet. That's why I wear a helmet. Because this bayonet likes to just pop off the rifle. And that's why I wear like to wear a helmet because it just instead of hitting my head, it dings the helmet. <laughs> so that is the Mall 1903 Springfield. And this is the kit of a US Army Doughboy and you know, very well off Doughboy in 1917, 1918. So that's going to finish it up for this video. Thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. Uh, hope you found this entertaining and helpful, especially now that I can use this. I can use this. The bolt is kind of making it so I can't grab it. There. Especially now with this. And that's about it. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe for more content like this. I don't know if I said that I, recently. I don't, I don't know if I said that, but anyway, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed.